Rebecca and you're watching SKG TV. Thanks for tuning in today. We're in my kitchen in Savannah, Georgia, and I'm getting ready to make a classic Southern favorite, some good old fried green tomatoes. I'll tell you exactly what you'll need. Let's get started. I've got two green tomatoes, some fresh basil, salt and pepper, Old Bay, some garlic powder, pure vegetable oil for frying, some red pepper jelly, and some creamy goat cheese. And I've also set up my dredging station already. So the first container is equal parts of all-purpose flour and cornmeal, and then a little egg wash. That's just an egg and some water, or if you have milk, you can use about two tablespoons of milk and some panko breadcrumbs. Where most of your flavor is gonna come in with fried green tomatoes is in your seasoning for your batter. So let's go ahead and season up our flour and our breadcrumbs. I'm just putting some salt and pepper in the flour and the cornmeal. And I'm gonna go ahead and season the um, panko breadcrumbs with the pepper and salt as well. And to our flour and um, cornmeal mixture, I'm adding Old Bay. That's my secret, y'all. And this is actually blackened Old Bay. It just really gives a nice uh, little touch of flavor. I'd say about a tablespoon or so. And then into our panko breadcrumbs, I'm just adding a touch of garlic powder for another note of flavor. And I'm just going to mix all that in with a fork. Let's get everything nice and incorporated. Alright, let's slice some tomatoes. And while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and slice up my basil. And this is actually called a chiffonade, which is just the fancy way of saying strips of basil. I've just stacked them all together in a little stack, and I'm rolling them up. And I'm going to come in here with my knife on the very end and just slice them into strips. And this will come into play for our garnish uh, when we plate. Perfect. Now that we've got our green tomatoes all sliced, I'm going to give y'all a quick tip. And most folks won't tell you this when you make fried green tomatoes, but it makes all the difference in the world. We're going to put our green tomatoes in a colander and then salt them real good. And that salt is going to act as an extractor and it's going to extract all of that water and excess liquid that's in the tomato. We're going to let them strain for 30 minutes and it will result in the crunchiest best tomato you've ever had. Now ask me how I know. I'm just lining them up and if you have a um, one of those strainers that fit over a baking sheet you could certainly use that as well. I just have a round colander here so it works just fine. So I've got all my tomatoes in my colander and I've got some salt here all I'm going to do is go right around, make sure every tomato gets good and salted. And in 30 minutes, there will be so much water that comes out of these, you'll be amazed. The tomatoes have been sitting for 30 minutes, and you can see the water has just pooled on top of them. So the salt has done its job. All right, y'all, let's fry some tomatoes. So I've got my green tomatoes here. I'm just going to go straight into my dredge. Start with the flour and cornmeal mixture. And I'm just using my hands. So we're going from flour to cornmeal into our egg wash. On both sides, let it drain a little bit. And then into the panko. And this panko is really going to give it a nice crunch on the outside. Make sure you get those sides really good too. 
and we're going to go straight from the panko into our hot oil. Make sure you get all those sides covered great. All right, here we go. And my oil is on about a medium heat. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the sizzle you want. I'm going to continue now with the rest of these. standard so what you're looking for is a crispy nice beautiful golden brown and this one is ready I've got a um, platter over here lined with paper towels for them to drain on we sit him right there and let him drain and I'm gonna take a look at these others and see if they're ready to flip yeah that's what we're looking for oh yeah these are beautiful and you want to do them in batches so that you're not crowding your pan about you know five to six i'm using a cast iron skillet it's about 10 to 12 inches so um, you could use a good frying pan if you don't have a cast iron skillet and you want to fill it with oil about a half of an inch up the side and um, just put it over about medium heat do not put your heat on too high because then you'll result in a black tomato and you don't want that <laughs> all right i'm going to give these about two more minutes on that side and i'm going to Continue dredging this last batch. So the tomatoes are all fried up, and since we dredged them so well, you can really see that crunchy exterior outer coating. You may remember from the beginning the red pepper jelly, the creamy goat cheese, and that fresh basil. Well, this is where it comes into play. We're getting ready to plate, and I want to give y'all few tips on plating to make your food look super presentable. So I've got some red pepper jelly here and red pepper jelly is available on most um, grocery store shelves near the jelly section. I'm fortunate enough um, to have some homemade red pepper jelly here from one of my sweet aunts. I come from a long line of good cooks. So what I'm doing is just putting a dollop of that red pepper jelly right in the in the kind of the side of the plate and we're going to take our spoon and just kind of do this little notion a couple of times. We're just going to create this pretty little bed of red pepper jelly. And there's no perfect or right or wrong way necessarily to do it. We're just creating a nice little bed and kind of a border for our tomatoes. Man, that looks good. All right, and I'm going to take my green tomatoes. And I'm going to um, plate. You always want to plate in odd numbers. So I'm going to pick three of my prettiest tomatoes, and we're just going to put them right in the center of this uh, plate. Kind of like that. And then maybe a smaller one so that you see that red pepper jelly. Mm-hmm. All right, and then I'm going to come in here and top it with some of this crumbled goat cheese and it is going to be the best flavor combination. Yum. It's right on top like so. About a tablespoon or so. And then that basil that we did the chiffonade on, it's going to go right on top. Looking some kind of good. I can't wait to dig into this, y'all. It looks so good. Let's get a little taste here. Mm. Wow, you really get that spice right away from the kick of that pepper jelly. And then there's the creamy tanginess of that goat cheese. And I'm even getting a hint of that Old Bay that we threw in the, the batter earlier. And the basil, the crunch, it all works together to create a delicious dish. I hope you'll make this at home 
and share it with me on social media. When you do, don't forget to use the hashtag SKGTV. You can find me on Facebook by searching for Some Kind of Good or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at SKG Food Blog. Don't forget to subscribe below and share it with your family and friends. Thanks for spending time with me. I'm Rebecca Lingenfeltzer and we'll see you next time.